23 of uh, April, we'll be hearing more on leadership. So I pray that God will use you to bless us this morning in Jesus' name. Let us pray. It is not by accident that our mommies sang of light and the band started by singing about the sun shining. Who is the light but you? Who is the sun but you? The light that shines and darkness cannot comprehend. Father Lord, we cry that your light will shine forth and every darkness will flee away. Every darkness will flee away. Darkness of distraction will flee away. Darkness of tiredness will flee away. Darkness of sickness will flee away. That the word you have for your people will be delivered. Father Lord, what makes manifest but light? Father Lord, make manifest even your word this moment in our lives in Jesus' name. Father Lord, remove me. Let it be all of you and none of me. There is no single individual here that I can help. There is no word I have of my own. Father Lord, we are all here listening to you and we know you are here. Father Lord, may we experience your presence here. May none of us live here the same. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, speak forth for your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Again, we thank God for the gift of today. The very first Thursday in the month of um, first Sunday in the month of um, April. The Ettings, they know how to lay down criteria and not to change it. They call it standards. And for anything that's, that will ever strive, standards are required. There was something that happened in 2012 Olympics that repeated itself in a much more dramatic fashion. Um, last year, there was a Commonwealth Games somewhere in Scotland. It was the women's relay, four by 400 meters. England, Team England won the race. You know, when you finish winning a race, there's, you do a lap of honor. You carry your flag and you keep running around the stadium and everybody will be greeting you, everybody will be telling you well done, everybody will be saying champion, they have done it. Analysts will be speaking, they will be showing if you broke the record or the time you ran, it will be showing. So while all this was happening, there was a quiet in the stadium. Nobody knew what was happening. Then not too long afterwards, the people that came first, Team England, they wrote disqualified. Ah -ah. Then they started showing. Can, can you take this? They started showing the slow-mo of what actually happened. There was one lady that just before she exchanged her button, there was one Nigerian girl that was also running for the English team. There was one lady that just before she exchanged her button from the English team, she stepped slightly out of her lane. She did not disrupt anyone. She did not affect anybody's time. She did not obstruct anybody. And that was the reason that Team England was stripped of their gold. If you're a human being, I don't think there's any experience that painful. Athletes, they have a very little lifespan. You cannot be an active athlete more than 33, 35 years. When I was looking at the ages of these ladies, by the next Commonwealth Games, some of them will be 33, some of them will be 32. Basically, they do not stand a chance to compete at the Commonwealth Games again. They work hard at least four years 
That's what you used to train for such tournaments. Is it fair? Is it just that for this kind of small error, somebody will be stripped of something that all their lives they've worked hard for, that they will never have a shot at again? Is it fair at all? When are rules ever fair? When are criteria ever fair? I mean, we say rules are made for, I mean, um, the rules are made for men and not the other way around. So why don't they just bend it and let these ladies go? They've declared them winner before everyone. And if they do not show that slow-mo, a lot of people probably wouldn't have seen or known. We we'll understand that in the context of what is happening in Nigeria. This election that just took place was a real contest in Nigeria. It had an ethnic color coloration and it had a religious coloration. So a lot of people went into this race. Their strongest argument was either their faith or where they came from. Almost all of us here fell into it. There are some states in Nigeria, if you want to contest a political appointment, just be a Catholic priest. There's a state in North Central. As a matter of fact, a Catholic priest is a current governor-elect. So telling someone alone that you are a Christian guarantees you votes. And it happened a lot this election. There was one place in the Northeast that the governor did not want um, a Senate member to continue. He went to do meeting with his people. The only way he could handle that was to bring a pastor to contest against the serving senator. So there are some governors that won election primarily on the basis that they are Christians, especially in the southern part of Nigeria. So one won election. When he went for primary, sorry, I'm going this route. We, didn't, we are not too far away from election, so you understand this. So when the man was contesting for primaries, the reason why he won the primaries was that he was a pastor. His other contestant, the reason why he lost the primaries was that they said he was a cult member. So pastor won election. Do you know the first thing pastor did? Do you know the first thing he has done? The first major pronouncement he did? He has declared happy hour. Pastor, do you know what happy hour is? It means from certain hours, like from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., government will subsidize the beer that anybody will drink. So if you go to beer parlor, pastor will subsidize it. If the beer is 300, pastor say, go and drink. I will pay you 150. I, I mean, you pay 150. So a pastor has been elected. What exactly is the criteria for choosing a godly leader. In Nigeria, we have gone through various experiences that generally it might even be difficult for someone to tell you the criteria for choosing a godly leader. So it's easy to just jump and go for someone that bears pastor or someone that comes to church because of election. But by the special grace of God, we are in an election period in the church as well, not just in the country. The reverend has mentioned six elders, their tenure is due, and two are up for re-election. Elder Okwanachi, Elder Jirai, Elder Alabi, Elder um, um, Kola, Elder Awang, and myself, our tenure is done. We are not due for, we are not um, eligible for election. But there are two more elders that are eligible for re-election. And then there's another elder that um, his tenure is still running. So, we finish the election of Nigeria. We are now in the church. What is the criteria for electing or choosing a godly leader? Let's open our Bibles. To the text that we read earlier today to Titus chapter 1 we we'll read um, the entire chapter and Acts chapter 1 we we'll read from verse 21 to 26 I know it's pretty long reading 
But don't worry. Even if it is just this reading we do today, it is okay. It is not the preacher's word that changes anything. It is the word of God that transforms. We'll be looking at, as we read, we'll be looking at the topic today on changing criteria for selecting godly leaders. On changing criteria for selecting godly leaders. So let's start off from Titus. And I'll read. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth, which accords with godliness in hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began and at the proper time manifested in his word through the preaching which have been entrusted by the command of God our Savior. To Titus, my true child in a common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. This is why I left you in Crete, so that you might put what remain into order and appoint elders in every town as I direct you. If anyone is above reproach, the husband of one wife and his children are believers and not open to the charge of debauchery or insubordination. For an overseer as God's steward must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or a drunkard or violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught so that they may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict him. Praise God. We'll pause here. By God's grace, um, it was 2021. It was um, March 26, 2021, that God gave me the privilege to do a study of Titus. And when I finished this study, I just titled, I just titled it, very difficult assignments. That's what I titled the book of Titus. Very difficult assignments. We all know Brother Paul. He's the rugged one. He's the one that can talk to everyone. He's the one that can stand up to authority. Everyone knew his pedigree before and after he had given his life to Christ. But compared to him, Titus was a small boy. If you read this chapter 1 and chapter 2, this is what Paul was telling Titus. He said, Titus, go to Crete and go there. I'm giving you a criteria that is used for selecting elders and you must apply that criteria in Crete. Crete, first of all, is a very horrible place. The people in Crete, when they describe Crete, you'll be wondering what kind of place is this. That they are liars, they are deceivers. They are, it's in the Bible, it's not me. That is the description of Crete. Crete seems to me like current day Las Vegas. They call Las Vegas Sin City. The kind of things they do there, you wonder if any Christian stays in that place. But in that city, there was a new church. They did not even have any experience on who an elder is supposed to be. If the church is new in a city this sinful, shouldn't the criteria be lower down? Are we together? If the city is as described and then the criteria is as described and the church is new, at least we should encourage a new church in a city of sin and reduce their criteria. Paul did not and he did not end, only end at that. 
he threw Titus at the deep end. Listen to what he said to Titus. He said, even in that small church, there are some elders that call themselves the circumcision group. He was basically telling them, telling Titus, make sure these elders do not smell anything close to leadership. What kind of trouble is that? Those people, they are forming a cartel. And they've told themselves that, except you are of the circumcision party, there is no way you can come into leadership in church. But Paul said to Timothy, make sure that you address this particular issue. We are not the church in Crete, we thank God. We are not the elders in Crete, we thank God. At least, there's a lot of things we should thank God for in this church. Throughout when this church has started, there is no elder that has gone astray. There is no elder that God has not spared his life. So we thank God that God has brought us today. And the reason that we are looking to elect is because 10 of us have elapsed. It's not because anyone has dropped dead. It's not because anyone has left the faith. But that was the situation that Titus found himself. And we, as equa members in Nigeria, the environmental conditions we found ourselves in our working places, in our society, it is beginning to look like if you are looking for anyone to serve God, you better lower the barrier or you will not find anyone. Are we together? Is that not how it looks? Doesn't it look like if you do not lower the barrier in Nigeria, you are hardly going to find people to serve God? So the man says he's a Christian. Eh, even though eh, he doesn't go to church, even though he has little issue with drinking, at least he's our Christian candidate. What do we do? Should we vote a Muslim as against our Christian candidate? Is that not the conversation? Let's lower the barrier. At least he's called by the name Christian. Whether it does happy hour or not. But Paul said, no, Titus. The standard can never be lowered. Whatever the environmental condition increases, the standard must remain firm. It doesn't matter that this is a young church, that it is a new church, the standard can never be dropped. It doesn't matter whatever is happening in that place. Do you know the kind of work? You just come, a small boy, come to a church, then look at the owners of the church, owners of church PLC, and you tell them that by the power of the Most High God, you do not qualify to be elders in this church. Who born Titus? But I like the way Paul started this letter. He said, an apostle to, uh, of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the faith of God, elect and their knowledge of the truth. <laughs> Paul is saying, as far as I'm concerned, there is something that brought me here. The faith of God, the knowledge of God, truth. It's not about the circumcision party. Because it is only the truth that will last. Whatever you do, Titus, that is not built on the truth, will surely, surely crash. Whatever you do, that is not built on faith and the knowledge of God, will surely, surely not last. And there are things that do not last. There's a lot and lot of lessons for us to learn as Nigerians. I was reading something yesterday. Someone mentioned that in the Second Republic, 1979, we had president, we had vice president, we had senate president, we had a uh, house of rep uh, leader, we had governors in all the states. He said, out of everyone that served in that regime 40 years ago, only two people are alive. The president, Shagari, Vice, Vice President, president Alessio call the name of your state governor. governor. Only Jim Obodo and one more person is alive. Even Jim Obodo, I can assure you today, in political language, he cannot deliver his polling units. He's only alive to eat and sleep and not cause trouble. If I ask you, this church is young. 
in Ekwa, we say two. If I ask you to start naming names of elders, you're just going to mention a few. Because some of them have served and gone. Some of them are not even... You not, some of them, you cannot even remember their names. The only thing that will last is the word of God that is built on truth. This is not about human beings. A human being at his best had 40 years to this church. There are a lot of people here that you don't know where they are. It is not about a human being. It is not about someone that speaks eloquently. No matter how eloquent you speak, you cannot last forever. You are just a human being, an elder that God needs in his hand to carry out a specific task and at a particular moment. It is not about your tribe. There is no tribe that because you are a Tangali man, if you are an elder, you will live forever. There is no such. The criteria of God never drops. It is not about where you walk. It is about God looking for people to join him in his assignment. I've shared this over and again, and I'll share it again. If you have the opportunity to serve God, it is just a privilege that can happen to any other person. I was in Wuse 2. When we're still in Wuse 2, I went to use the bidets in the gents. So the Spirit of God ministered in my mind that I should go and buy camphor. And every Sunday, I should just go to the bidet and put camphor there. I said, that's a good idea. I did not do it on Sunday. I did not do it on Monday. And I think it was on Tuesday when I came for Bible studies. I said, let me just go and use the, the gents. Do you know somebody has bought camphor, camphor and has already put in those things? And the person just entered that ministry of camphor. No space again. Camphor. It was just a privilege that God would have given anybody. It is not because you are tall. It is not because you can preach. It is not because you can pray from night to morning. It is God that is looking for people. Even the one that Jesus chose himself. Some of them were sleeping during night vigil, brother Peter. So it is not because you are alive during prayer and during sermon. It is because God needs you or needs someone at that particular time to carry out a task. And it is a privilege because apart from you, there are a thousand more, a thousand and one more. So don't be under the illusion, and we've had it a lot in local church parlance. I Mba Muba, church in Andayarushe. Have you had that before? You've never had that before? Mba Muba, Walai, Pastor Nandayasha Kunya. You've not had that before? If you are in Equire, there is nothing you know here. Sorry, Sister Ogi, I'm, I'm speaking in tongues. I was basically saying there are some churches that you hear something like, if not for us, this church will have died. Or if not for us, this pastor will have been living in shame. We hear that all the time. It is because we think we are so special and God needs us to carry out an assignment. So, if the criteria cannot be reduced for anyone, if it is indeed not because of the speciality of anyone, not because of his tribe, not because of his eloquence, not because of his riches, how then can we select people that will lead in the church and in the vineyard of God when they are called. Let's go to the book of Acts now. All right, again, I'll not read from verse 1. I'll just go to where we read. So, one of the men 
who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out amongst us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of those men must, be, must become with us a witness of resurrection. And they put forward two, two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was called Justus, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which um, Judas turned aside to go his own way. And they cast Lord for them, and the Lord fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven. Praise God. Praise God. When I read Acts chapter 1, one thing that was clear was that there were about 120 people that were qualified to replace Judas. 120 people. And there were powerful people in that list, such as my namesake, Stephen, and Philip, and the other people that were selected to serve food. Very, very competent people. But it is good to start from the beginning. If we have an understanding of why leaders are required in church, it will help us when we are thinking and when we are praying and when we are nominating and when we are electing. Peter said in verse 22, one of these men must become with us a witness of his resurrection. A witness of his resurrection. So this is what Brother Peter is saying. He said this person that we are going to nominate or elect has just one work to do. He's not being secretary of the church. That is not his work. He's not being treasurer. That is not his work. He's not being financial secretary. That is not his work. It is not being evangelism secretary. That is not his work. His work is one. A witness of his resurrection. 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 Of his resurrection. The life of the person that is nominated is the life of a witness. That someone we see the person's acts or deeds inside or outside the church and give his life to Christ or and hear the gospel or repent or forsake their evil ways. When you hear that a church requires an elder, it is nothing more than that. When reverend says six positions are up for nomination two for re-election that is what reverend is saying reverend is not saying the church needs a new secretary or the church needs a new financial secretary reverend is basically saying the church needs six new witnesses of god's resurrection so that the kingdom of god will expand so that the name of the lord will not be dragged in the mud someone told us a story i don't know if it's real or a creation. He said so a young man was in the church and when the young man had a sermon, the young man, you know the way you'll be struggling to come out. You're asking yourself, should I come out? Should I not come out? Should I come out? Should I not come out? So one elder in the church noticed the young man struggling. Then the elder went to encourage the young man to come out and accept Jesus and come out for the salvation call. The young man came out and accepted Jesus and gave his life to Christ for the first time. And the young man thanked the elder. During the week, the young man went to town 
to conduct a business. And the young man was swindled. And guess who swindled the young man? The person that called him to give his life to Christ was the person that defrauded the man in town. Witness of resurrection. It doesn't matter how good a financial secretary that elder is or was. It doesn't matter how good a secretary that elder was. It doesn't matter how good a treasurer that elder was. The testimony he has given is that he cannot be trusted. He loves money more than the things of God. He doesn't care about the salvation of anyone. If you can help somebody give his life to Christ and you swindle the person in town, which message will go out louder? In fact, it will be worse. Because when the boy is narrating the story, normally you say, somebody defrauded me. But his own story, people will gather. You know why? Because he will say, an elder. They will say, eh? He will say, I'm not even finished telling you. Not just an elder. An elder that helped me to give my life to Christ. Hey! Jesus has brought us to a place that we need people that will be nominated by his children to be a witness of his resurrection. The choices are not easy. 120 righteous people. They are able and qualified people in the church. But the debacle before the disciples is, should we choose Justus or should we choose Matthias? If it is goodness, they are both good. If it is service, they all serve. If it is hospitality, they all qualify. But Jesus wants one person. So the question is, do we choose Justus or do we choose Matthias? The meaning of Justus, Barabbas, is peace. Is peace not good? Is justice not good? Matthias means the gift of God. So if you are asked to choose between the peace of God and the gift of God, I can assure you in the next 10 hours, you'll be writing and canceling. Because it is very tough. It is always easy to choose between good and bad. But when they give you choose between better and best, you will sweat. You will sweat. But there's a lot more to learn from the experience of choosing a disciple. Peter was a very, very wise leader. Two things. One, he advised himself. If you see what is for prayer, it is for prayer. It is not for intellectual argument. It is not for experience. What is for prayer is for prayer. Choosing between this kind of thing is for prayer. So he started praying. Just like the master Jesus did. He started praying. And most of us, when we want to take very important decisions in our life, even if you are not prayerful, even for the sake of fear of doing mistake, you pray. Tell any lady here that you want to marry her. You have automatically tell her to go and start praying and fasting. It's not because you are not good, but because she knows that this is very, very important. When it was my time to, to marry, I prayed though. I fasted though. 40 days. Because I don't want to go and meet somebody and just... At a point in time, I started asking myself, is it because I'm afraid? But the truth is, if I ask us, I'm sure at very critical point in our lives, if you view the matter serious, you pray and fast. Any matter that you do not view seriously is the one that you just do because you don't care about the consequence. But any matter, any matter that you take seriously in your life is a matter of prayer and fasting. Even if you know, even if you know, you pray. So Peter led the disciples in the right way, in the way of prayer. That was not it. He said something again. He said, in addition to this thing being a matter of prayer, it is a matter of knowing the hearts. For Brother Justus and Brother Matthias, it's not about a good or bad heart. 
It is about the hearts that are aligned to the calling of God at that moment. Brother Peter say, even if Dr. Alabi puts scanner inside people's chest and the picture of the heart comes here, it is meaningless to us. There is just one person that can interpret the heart perfectly. And that person is God. So let's pray to God. Let him reveal the heart. Let him reveal the heart. It is not about the physical. It is about the heart. Father, reveal the heart. Father, reveal the heart to us of that person that I've chosen to lead your congregation in the next three years. After they were sure that they prayed, then they were comfortable to participate in any election. Today is nomination. Have you prayed? Have you fasted? Have you made, the, made a list outside prayer and fasting? Has somebody come and, and marketed anybody to you? One of my cousins, after my dad's burial, he met me very early in the morning. I said, Uncle Yaya. He said, Kyle. Zamukuma, Abuja. I want to go back to Abuja. I want to go back to Abuja. His church is uh, in Maraba side. I say, what is the matter? He say, Munada election. is an elder in his church. There is election in his church. He needs to be on ground because there is, uh, you know, if he's not on ground, the team will not work. <laughs> I just looked at my elder, my uncle. I just laughed. I say, Uncle Kena. So they've done meeting. They have agreed certain things. They have nominated their candidate. The pastor is doing one kind, one kind. If he's not on ground, that their plan will not work. So he left, he left just very early in the morning. I was even afraid. I said, God, have mercy on this one. Anything happens to him on, road now, on the road now, what will you say? That I was coming to Abuja to, to join my camp in church election. But it is very, very unfortunate these are some of the things that we look at when electing people in the body of Christ. Does this one have money? Is he my village man? As if, if your village man becomes an elder, automatically everybody in your village will go to heaven. They will get bed space for all of you. Their criteria, they are clearly listed, and there is no criteria that looks like those criteria. So they cried that God should reveal the heart. And God revealed the heart. And Matthias was elected. And guess what? There was no protest. Because the primary reason why the 120 were following Jesus was because of Jesus. If all of them were following Jesus to take over from Judas. They will have scattered everywhere. No wonder Stephen and Philip and the seven in Acts chapter 6 were able to do exploits. Because they understood that you don't have to be numbered among the twelves to carry out the purpose of God. Men and brethren, you don't have to be an elder to carry out the purpose of God. There are a lot of places you can serve. Whether it is sweeping, if it is the one that glorifies God, do it. In the eyes of God, God has looked at your heart and you are much more elevated than that. Otherwise, what will Lazarus be doing above the rich man? You can imagine what often Lazarus will be giving that time. You can imagine what they will be saying about the rich man in church. Because if you tell the rich man, I don't have a job, he will give you employment. What will Lazarus give you? Lazarus will finish you with Bible. He doesn't have, he just be preaching. But when they got there, God recognized Lazarus. Being chosen as a disciple does not make you any better than anyone. So the disciples came to Jesus in Luke. Very interesting people. Somebody came to report them to Jesus that uh, these ones, I came to meet them to cast out demons. They were not able to cast out demons. Do you know what they came to tell Jesus today? They came to tell Jesus that, ha, ha Jesus, say we are the one that are elders. Jesus said, yes. You are the one that selected us. Jesus said, yes. 
He says, so we went out. How come that other people are not elders? Are casting out demons in your name? Are you hearing this one? How come other people that are not elders are casting out demons in your name? How come that someone that is just a band leader is laying hand and someone is getting healed? You, you are an elder, you are laying hand, somebody is not getting healed. People that could not cast out demons. People that were envious of people that cast out demons. One day again, they came and meet Jesus. They wanted to abuse power. You know what they told Jesus? Jesus, should we call fire from heaven? Let him finish these people. Fire from heaven. Fire from heaven. So they were elected in the 12. But look at the life they were living. Compared to brother Stephen that saw Jesus clearly. The point I'm making is this. That someone is elected an elder is the choice of God for the person to serve that time. A cleaner might have much more reward in that three years tenure than the elder. A gatesman might have much more miracle in his life that year than an elder. So the fact that someone is not elected an elder does not make him any less than anyone. Of course, the calling of God is what we should all respect. Whether he's a gatesman, whether he's a cleaner, whether he's band leader, whether he's elder. Our responsibility is to respect that person. Because we are looking at that person as we are looking unto God. The person stands in for the reverend as the reverend stands on behalf of God, even in this congregation. What are the consequences of choosing leaders? Of course, there's always a left side and a right side. And the story that came to mind was in 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 8 to 39. That scripture was where the generals of David were listed. You just hear that one person killed 300 military people. Is it even humanly possible to phantom that? That you, one, killed 300 people. Just look at their CVs. Look at the CVs. But guess what? Before David... All of them were fleeing before Goliath. Before David, they did not know that they could fight one person. I can tell you something for free. Any of these generals mentioned for David, if Goliath stands before them, they will slay Goliath. What happened to them? When a godly le leader is chosen, giants arise in the church. Are we together? If we elect godly leaders, Giants will arise in the church. Men will find their purpose in the church. People will do exploit for Jesus in the world. This is not written just like a story in the Bible. It is written for days like this. If a good leader is chosen, giants will arise. People will begin to do things that ordinarily they are not able to do. Because the enablement of a godly leader covers his people. Which military training did they go to? Apart from the fact that the anointing of God was upon their leader. So it is for your good. It is for your prosperity. It is for the prosperity of the children of God and the household of God that will select godly leaders. Unfortunately, there are dangers of selecting leaders not through the purpose of God, not for the call of being witness, for other sentiments. When we read Isaiah chapter 56, verse 10 to 12, we will see that. But I will just touch on one or two because of time and then draw this to a close. It was basically talking about Bad shepherds. The number one thing that got my mind is blind watchmen. Blind watchmen. What is that English word that when two things contradict and you put them together? There's an English word that has escaped my mind. When you say something good, bad, when you put two contradicting words together. Well, 
for a watchman to be blind. There is something wrong in that English. But the Bible is saying they are blind watchmen. And in the Bible, the story that comes to mind most is the story of Eli. Eli, the priest of God in the temple of God. Eli had two major assignments. One, to see and save people through prayers or through passing the message of God. Secondly, to keep the lights in the temple burning through putting of oil periodically. But do you know what the Bible said about Eli? Eli was lying down there that his sight was getting dim and the light in the temple was what? He was about to go out. So you are a priest in the temple. You cannot see and the light is about to go out. No wonder God bypassed him for a little boy. Men and brethren, there are dangers of not choosing leaders based on prayers, of not allowing God to reveal the heart of leaders and not understanding that leaders are meant primarily <clears throat> to be witness of the Most High and nothing else. There are dangers of going ar around that and choosing leaders based on our, on, on our understanding, based on the fact that we believe the standards of our generation has fallen down and our God will understand our normal refrain. Today, we'll be nominating elders. One thing I can assure you is that the standard of God does not drop. In case you have not realized, everyone seated in this church this day that will be part of nomination and the election, your name today is Titus. God has given you a very important and difficult assignment that if you want to do with the strength of arm, you surely fail. But we trust our God that has brought us thus far these six years, that he will lead us further, even from the choices that we do and the decisions that we take and the nominations and elections that we do. I will tell you something. It is not by force to nominate somebody. Let anybody not come and coerce you. If you feel you've not prayed enough, or if you feel God has spoken to you, you must not nominate. Let nobody come and say, ah, Kaiba can nominate. Ne nominate, man, and nominate. Kaiba, communicant, but mm -mm. it is not a must to nominate. It is not a must to elect. Thank God we still have more time to pray before election. You have between now and close of service to pray for who to nominate. And it is not a must. Reverend will not put you under church discipline if you do not nominate. Because this is a very serious matter. And God himself is interested. We've had delegates who come. The most important delegate here is God. Because if there's anyone thing he's interested in, he's interested in the fellowship of his people and their well-being and they carrying out his purpose in their time. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you. It is indeed a privilege to be your children. And Father Lord, we thank you because you are Father, the God of light and the God of all truths. There is no assignment that you've given us that you've not given us a way out. Today, we are nominating elders and on 23rd, we'll be electing. Father Lord, you've told us three things. One, you are looking for witness, not people. You are looking for witness. Secondly, you require of us to pray. And lastly, it is the matter of the heart. It is only you that can help us understand the matters of the heart. And therefore, we we'll submit ourselves totally, even into thy hand. May your will be done through us, Father Lord, in Jesus' name. We come against any evil counsel. We come against any evil counsel, any counsel that's not of you. In Jesus' name we have prayed, amen.